Hello to all my people out there. This is episode 91. Welcome to Talk Wrestling. Again, thank you all for watching and thank you for the feedback on the book review. Um, I know, I know it's Hulk, I know. So, but thank you for the review. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, different book to review this time and as well as a DVD and we have your 10 questions. Um, not much else to say. Let's get right to it. This is from Steve Parker talking about Survivor Series coming up. What's your favorite traditional Survivor Series elimination match? I think I already asked that question, didn't I? Oh, no, I, my favorite team. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite match, Survivor Series elimination match, was from my first Survivor Series. And it was Team Flair versus Team Piper. And Flair was the sole survivor. That's my favorite. I, I don't remember who all it was. In. I know Piper was the captain, Flair was the captain, Flair was the sole survivor. I know Brett was on Piper's team, I think. I think Virgil was on Piper's team. I think the Warlord and Martell were on Flair's team. DiBiase may have been on Flair's team. I don't remember exactly what the teams were. But I remember that was my favorite match. That was a very good match. This is from Jan Jap or JJ as he asked me to say Ab Ab Abink. Sorry about that. As I was wondering due to, due to living in Denmark, can we ever expect a pay-per-view here in Europe as I did with SummerSlam 92? And if so, what pay-per-view do you think it will be and what country is most attractive to do for the WWE? Um, I've been looking forward to seeing a pay-per-view in Europe. I, I, you know, I'd like to see them do a pay-per-view in Europe again, but the problem is with this, there's so much production value loss when they go to Europe as far as the delay on TV and you know everything I get they have to do it at a weird time of the day and you know it, it it just it's not cohesive to the company to do a pay-per-view in Europe because of the such big time difference um, if they were to do pay-per-view it should be not WrestleMania it should be one of the other ones like Rumble SummerSlam or Survivor Series. So if they do do it, there should be one of the other big three besides WrestleMania. Keith asks me, who are your favorite women indie wrestlers? Well, um, Daphne, as much as she's in TNA, she's still an indie wrestler. So I have to go with Daphne. Uh, out here, Candice LeRae. Uh, Christy Von Erie is good. Um... Michelle Morgan, or Morgan, or whatever name she's going by this week is good. Back in the day, Erica Porter, who was supposed to be on uh, XMV, and we ever, never got the interview. She was at Adrenaline Unleashed with me and Josh at the announcer's booth for part of the show. Um, uh, Lizzie Valentine. Uh, Valentina, you know, J-Love, whatever you want to call her. Uh, Lizzie's good. Um, Nikki the New York Knockout. Great wrestler. Good friend. Uh, that's pretty much it, really. I don't follow all the women, unfortunately. I, I, I should. I'm supposed to be, you know, this authority on wrestling. I should follow everybody, but I don't. Um, I hear a lot of the good things about Mischief in the East, on the East Coast. It's Shimmer, and she's the NWA Women's Champion right now. Uh, Kong, of course, uh, in TNA, but she's also in the independent scene as well. Uh, you know, a lot of them are very, very good. This one is from Neil Moss. What is your favorite Mick Foley hardcore match? I would pick Edge versus Mick Foley, WrestleMania 22, or even the six-person six tag at One Night Stand 2006. Those matches had such great buildup and were fantastic. Of course, there are a lot of great Mick Foley hardcore matches. Which one is your favorite? Um, honestly, and it, it, it wasn't so much that it was a great match, it was just the fact that it was so brutal and so explosive. Cactus Jack versus Terry Funk in Japan in August of 1995. They had barbed wire, they had thumbtacks, they had all kinds of weapons, and they even had C4 explosives attached to the ring, and the guys got, their, got themselves blown up, literally blown up in the ring. That's fucking hardcore right there. Uh, current, the more modern times than the last few years, Edge versus uh, Mick Foley is probably my favorite Mick Foley hardcore match. Uh, in WWE, it's my favorite Mick Foley hardcore match, to be sure. Um, the one on one night stand was kind of clusterfucky, I thought. So I'm not sure if I particularly like that one over Edge versus Mick Foley. But uh, the one 
that One Night Stand was okay. But my favorite is Cactus vs. Terry Funk in, in Japan in August of 95. That was my favorite. Alright, this week's book review comes from Adam Cassell. I believe his name is Adam. He, he uses his mom's email, Joyce, so I, I don't know what his name is. I think it's Adam. Anyway, I, I, by the way, the DVD review came from Dark Side. I apologize for not saying that. The book, DVD review came from Dark Side. This week's book review comes from Adam Cassell, and it is Controversy Creates Cash by Eric Bischoff. I wanted to review this one because Bischoff's been in the news with Hogan and TNA and everything. Um, this was a gift that was given to me for a birthday or Christmas. I, I had asked for it. And this is going to be one of the ones that I'm on the fence about, guys. Um, he pulls no punches. That's for sure. But, uh, see, the thing is, I'm not the biggest Eric Bischoff fan in the world. So, I couldn't really get into the book like I wanted to. And I didn't read the whole book. I only read from the time he started WCW up until now. So, I'm kind of skewed on that. I went back and read it later, the rest of his life. But, um, I just, I, I couldn't get into the Bischoff's book the way I got into, you know, Jericho's book or Bret Hart's book or the Hulkster's books or, you know, anything like that. I couldn't get into it because I'm not a huge Eric Bischoff fan. I'm just, you know, I'm not. I like Eric Bischoff as a as a performer. I didn't like, you know, some of Bischoff's creative um, decisions. Uh, but if you are an Eric Bischoff fan, I highly recommend it. If you're not and you're on the fence about whether you like Bischoff or not, read the book and check it out. Because it is, it is a good read. I just couldn't get into it myself. But it is a very good read. So, check it out. I don't know how to say this name and I apologize. Um, I'm not sure where you're from either. I, I'm, I didn't get that in my email. Uh, Tommy Leti, T O M I, and then L E H T I is your first and last name. So I apologize for ruining your name there, sir, or ma'am. Uh, what do you think about Ludwig Borges not being noticed as a former Intercontinental Champion when he faced and beat Razor Ramon for the title, but was stripped of it because of HBK's interference? Yeah. Um, I remember reading about that that Ludwig Borges had beat Razor for the Intercontinental Championship. But Razor's foot was on the rope when he got the pinfall, so they restarted the match, and then he beat him again, but because of Shawn Michaels' interference, and then the referee realized that, he overturned the decision and gave the match to Razor. Um, I think that was just something to get the live crowd going, whoa, wait a minute, we saw a title change. I don't think they were going to actually do it in storyline and actually recognize it as a title change, so, uh, you know, Ludwig Borga was a good heel for his time, but I don't think he was going to get pushed as a champion. I think he was just going to be, you know, a, a uh, work-through guy, I guess is the best way to put it. I, I, I never saw him winning the title, so it was very hard to believe that would have happened. This is from Andrew Sharp. I was wondering, do you think Stone Cold Steve Austin would have had the same career if Shawn Michaels didn't get hurt at the 1998 Royal Rumble? I've been watching a lot of 1997 episodes of Raw as War. I know that Shawn basically ran the WWF at that time. Do you think Shawn would have given the title to Austin? Just wondering what you think. Well, you have to remember, Steve was getting hot in 96. Austin was getting hot in 96. And... I think Vince had the long-term plan to put the belt on him WrestleMania 18, and the fact that they had Shawn gut it out and still pass the torch to him at WrestleMania 14 in 1998 tells me that Austin was going to be the guy at WrestleMania that year. So I, whether Shawn got hurt or not, obviously, because he still worked hurt, he still worked the match, he still went through it and gutted it out and you know gave the performance of a lifetime. Um, Austin was going to be the guy no matter what. I think Austin was Vince's long-term plan, and it worked out great. They took over the ratings war and won the ratings war because of him and Rock and Triple H and all those other guys. But without Austin, there would have been no ratings turnaround, I don't think, and who knows what would have happened. All right, this one is going to probably get me a few hate mail, a few pieces of hate mail, but uh, it was a request, and I wanted to review it because I do own it. John Cena, My Life. Um, I know, boo, I know, I know. A lot of you guys don't like Cena. I'm not Cena's biggest fan right now because it, the, the whole thing has just gotten old. I'm just about, about done with it. But 
John Cena is the WWE's biggest name right now. And if you are a John Cena fan, I say go buy this. If you're, if you're not a John Cena fan, if you've never been a John Cena fan, and you just want to see you know, what his life was prior to WWE and growing up and going through UPW out here in California and OVW as the prototype and everything, then by all means, borrow it from a friend. Don't buy it. But, um, you know, check it out. And tell me what you guys think, honestly. Uh, I happen to like it. I wasn't. I was a Cena fan when I bought it because I had seen the Marina ready, and I was. I was liking John Cena at the time I bought this. Now I'm just like, oh god, I'm so done with him. But at the time I liked him, so I bought it. And or actually, I think I got it as a. I might have gotten this as a gift. I don't remember. I don't remember if I got this as a gift or as I bought it. I honestly don't remember what, what the circumstances were. But um. Go check it out. Borrow from a friend if you're a Cena fan and get your opinion formulated before you go buy it. If you're not a Cena fan, don't even bother because it's very, very uh, prototypical <laughs> of a Cena release. So if you don't like Cena, don't buy it. If you're a Cena fan, go take a look at it. Another Hogan question. Everybody's asking me Hogan questions. I like you guys. This is awesome. This is from Corey. Which version of Hogan did you like better, Hulk in the 80s or Hollywood in the NWO? Well, it's very easy to say I like both, you know, but because I did, you know, I was one of the few people I know, friends of mine back then, that didn't give up on Hulk when he turned bad and became this evil person. But uh, it's hard to say that you know I was more of a fan of the NWO Hogan than than Hulk Hogan. Uh, Hulk was my hero, you know. I, I grew up watching him and from the time I was seven years old up until even now. Uh, you know, it's almost 20 years of watching Hulk Hogan. Um, and I grew up watching him because of the red and yellow, the tra training, say your prayers, your environments, believe in yourself, and all that. Uh, Hulk Hogan from the 80s and the early 90s. So um, I think the red and yellow Hulk is my favorite Hulk uh, persona, for sure. This is a good question from a multiple time question sender, Pedro Vargas. What was the bloodiest match you've ever seen? Well, I was I originally was going to say that Aaron knew the answer to this question, but I forgot he wasn't there. It was Mike and I only. Uh, we went to XPW in March of 2003 on my birthday. It was February 28th and March 1st, 2003. And on March 1st, the main event was a King of the Death Match championship match between the champion Supreme. And if you all know who Supreme is, if you don't know, find out and former ECW star Ian Rotten. If you don't remember who Ian Rotten is, look up the feud between Ian Rotten and his brother Axel from 95, including the Taipei Deathmatch with the tape fists with the broken glass. Yeah, Ian Rotten, that guy. These guys had a no-rope barbed wire rope match, which means there was no ring ropes, it was just barbed wire for the ropes. And it got so bloody and so gross. I'll remember this to the day I die. I'll remember this for all time. I was up there with a guy named Justice Payne. I don't remember his real name. I couldn't tell you now. And Tammy Sitch, Sonny. When the three of us were sitting there watching that match, and Sonny and I were literally dry heaving. It was that gross and that bloody and that gory that we were literally about to throw up. And if we had food in our stomachs, we probably would have thrown up. It was awful. Uh, that's the bloodiest thing I've ever seen. Besides, the bloodiest thing I've ever seen, though, up close... Um, was my old boss Gary Yap when he got hit hit with the uh, Epic War Championship belt and just gushered all over his face. It got on my fucking jacket for crying out loud. That was gross. So that the, the bloodiest thing I've ever seen was Gary. The bloodiest match I've ever seen was Supreme and Ian Rotten from XPW. This is another uh, dream card. I had one of these last week about TNA versus WWE, and I have one here. Kevin Broughton, if you could have the Ultimate WrestleMania Dream Card pay-per-view, who would you have on your card? Okay, again, this is my picks. It doesn't mean that, you know, these are the guys that belong on WrestleMania or belong on, you know, you know any pay-per-view or whatever. This is just who I would like to see, okay? So don't go crazy, people. I like to see the match that Bret Hart talks about all the time that he would want to have done. Bret Hart versus Kurt Angle. Okay. 
Rob Van Dam versus Owen Hart. I would like to see in that match. A three-way dance with Mick Foley as referee. Aaron, who am I going to put in a three-way dance with Mick Foley as referee? Which match? If I'm picking a three-way match with Mick Foley as referee, who am I going to put in a three-way match? There you guess. You and Noah and Nagel? Yes, that's right. No. Cactus Jack versus Mankind versus Dude Love. That's what I want to see right there. I know it's not possible, but it's my dream. So I can pick whatever I want. Me and Noah Nail, what the hell are you talking? I don't even want to fight Mike. What the hell is wrong with you? I like Mike. I, I even like Noah. It was a storyline. Or was it? Or was it? Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, I want to see Triple H versus The Rock because that was a great match in its day. And it never happened WrestleMania one-on-one, so I'd like to see that. I like to see a rematch from this year's WrestleMania. I'm going to talk about this next show, but uh, Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. I want to see that match again. I want to see a rematch of TLC3. Edgy Christian versus the Hardys versus the Dudleys versus Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. I want to see that match again. And the main event would be Hulk Hogan from 1987 versus Stone Cold Steve Austin from 1998. That would be my main event. I want to see those two guys hook it up. This is from Steven Molesky. I was just wondering, looking through PWI's Match of the Year listings and found something been very interesting. Since 2004, Shawn Michaels has been part of the Match of the Year. 2004, of course, with Triple H and Benoit. 2005 versus Kurt Angle. 2006 versus Vince McMahon. 2007, the match on Raw against John Cena. And 2008 against Ric Flair. My question is, should this race and red flags in WWE management since Triple H, HBK, Ric Flair, John Cena with limited ability, and Vince non-wrestler are putting on matches of the year instead of the younger talent? To me, this means lower to mid-card and WWE is very bland. Um, yeah, that's uh, it's very interesting that that has happened. Shawn Michaels, uh, not, you know, but you see, the thing with Shawn Michaels is um, he's still one of the better guys on the roster. I've been saying that since he came back. You know, Shawn Michaels can still go. But yeah, as far as um, Triple H, again, one of the guys that is the go-to guy. John Cena, yes, limited mobil limited ability in the ring, but he's still the WWE's go-to guy. Talk about this in the DVD review. He's still the man. Uh, Vince, yeah, non-wrestler. Ric Flair, yes, an old guy. Um, it is interesting that the match of the year, according to PWI readers, has been Shawn Michaels and his opponent of the week, uh, of the year. But that's how PWI readers, you know, read things. They, you know, they see it the way they want to see it. That's how talk wrestling viewers are. They see things the way they want to see it, and they have their own opinions, and I like that. Um... Personally, my match of the year candidate this year so far, we're going to talk about this on the next show, uh, is a Shawn Michaels match. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens for the rest of this year. That's going to do it for episode 91 of Talk Wrestling. Again, uh, I didn't mention this yet, but this Sunday, live on pay-per-view, is the Survivor Series presented by the World Wrestling Entertainment Company. I was going to say Wrestling Federation there for a second there, and I caught myself. Um... NoDQ.com will have live coverage beginning at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. Only on NoDQ.com will you get the best up-to-the-minute coverage. So check out NoDQ.com this Sunday. Don't forget to check out the MySpace, the Facebook, and the Twitter, and the YouTube, of course, NoDQCW. And next show, Aaron has asked me to make my picks. Next show, we're going to talk about the NoDQ year-end awards that Aaron posts every year. You guys are going to get to vote. You're going to nominate your own picks and make your own picks. But I'm going to make my own picks for the various award categories. So that will be next show. So don't forget to tune in episode 92. This has been episode 91 of Talk Wrestling.